Hello everyone, my name is Chris Snedden and I'm here in my little basement studio in London, Ontario and I've been making things out of clay for about 35 years in the area and uh, been really fortunate to do a number of workshops all over the place. Uh, but right now I'd like to take things right back to the basics and I'm going to produce a series of hand building, basic hand building videos and I hope you enjoy them. So the impetus for doing these videos is I've been teaching, I've had the privilege of uh, being able to teach a gen ed elective in Sarnia at Lambton College in pottery. And as much as it's about clay, it's also about, you know, those good soft workplace skills like showing up and showing up on time and working well with others, cleaning up after yourself, process management, things like that. And so in the course of teaching them of these basic hand building techniques, I, you know, of course, searched on YouTube to see if I could find some videos uh, to show them these techniques as well, you know, give, give them all sorts of um, opportunities to learn, right? And uh, when it came to pinch pots, I found that most videos on YouTube tended to be geared towards children. Children tend to make pots like this. And that's fine as far as it goes, right? It's very entertaining for them, but <clears throat> I really feel like there's a lot to be learned from pinch pots. And for example, you know, well, start it, we'll start off. You know, starting off as we all do with pinch pots, you take a ball of clay about the size of a tennis ball, maybe a lacrosse ball, depends on the size of the pinch pot you want to make. And you take your thumb and you press it in and pinch and turn, 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 all the way around until finally what you've got is something like this, right? And, uh, but that's too thick. So we need to thin the walls out. Otherwise it'll blow up in the kiln, right? The water plasticity will not be able to escape and the pot will blow up in the kiln, not making the technician, me, very happy, right? So what I'm going to do is put my fingers on the outside of the pot and then using my thumb, draw up the walls like this. So that will thin the walls out and give this little pinched bowl some height. But it leaves the bottom very, very thick. So one of the things that we learn from pinch pots is how to feel the difference between thick areas and thin areas. So in order to make the bottom thinner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to push out as I turn the bowl around. And what that will do is push the clay up the walls where I can then get to it with my thumb and lift the walls even higher. All the way around. And I'm going to try and make the inside as smooth as I can, but I don't need to worry about it too much right now because we can address that later. So another thing that we <clears throat> learn from pinch pots is a sensitivity to the material. We learn that at some point the clay will become so floppy because it's thin now and this is a moist clay body, right? It's very pliable. At some point we're going to have to put it away and leave it alone. Let it harden up. Pinching it and pinching it. Bellying it out. So here, I don't know if you can see that, 
the clay is I've got a little area here that the clay is starting to crack a little bit I can take a little bit of clay stick it on there nobody will ever know now a lot of times when people are <clears throat> making their pinch pots what will happen is they'll develop a little crack on the edge of the pinch pot. And that's what Tony Clonell calls the tomato packet principle. You know those little ketchup packages, they have that little pre-made tear on there so that you can actually tear the top off and get at the delicious sauce, right? Put them on your french fries. Well, the same thing kind of happens with clay, only it's a little more disastrous right? If you develop a crack on the edge, it will, as the clay dries and shrinks and goes through the process, the, uh, the tear or the crack will extend itself down further. And uh, so if you notice a crack on the edges of your pots, don't panic. All you need to do is to take a little bit of water, drop it down into the crack, Take another little piece of clay and stuff it down in there. And nobody will ever know. It's interesting. I've been spending some time with some archaeologists lately. And we were talking about pinch pots. And when archaeologists dig up a site, they call these learner pots. Because there's so many, so many things to learn from them. And they know that... While the adults, you know, usually the women, were making fabulous pots, they were teaching others to make pots. And they taught them by having them make pinch pots. So I think that's just sort of to the point, you know, where. This is very rough, right? This is the rough draft. You know, it will get more refined as we go. But we are at a point where I think I will just have to wait and let the clay harden up. Good. I'll set it over here and wait. Aha! Speed things up a little bit with the Burns-O-Matic TS-4000, except no substitutes. Steamy. So now the clay's gotten a little bit harder. Or you could use a heat gun. Or a hair dryer. And generally speaking, fast quick drying is not a good idea, but I'm not a patient man. because I'm burning off that water, the water of plasticity, the water that makes it malleable. So I can handle it a little bit more now. It's still movable, but it's not floppy. So there's one of those cracks that I was telling you about. 
in the rim right there don't panic just take a little bit of water drop it down in there take another bit, little bit of clay stuff it in interesting talking to uh, these archaeologist friends of mine at the Museum of Ontario Archaeology check them out they're really great folks um, <clears throat> I mentioned this thing about the little cracks in the rim and they went oh that's why we see those additions on the rim so oftentimes the makers perspective on these things is very different from the archaeologists so we're having fun discovering that about each other but their perspective is pretty cool Okay, a little bit more. And we'll come back when this is leather hard. Okay, now we're back and the pinch pot is leather hard, right? That is that means that it's sort of the consist the consistency of chocolate. Uh, you know, good Belgian chocolate, not that crappy, waxy stuff. Anyway, uh, it's sort of the consistency of chocolate. It's harder, it's firmer, uh, it's still steaming, and that's okay, right? I can still manipulate it and use it, but now I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite pottery tools. The Surform Blade. This thing lovingly known as the little cheese grater thingy by my students. So uh, thank you to uh, Michael Sherrill and Mud Tools for producing these little handles. They make them much easier to use. You don't have to have one, but I gotta say, they're pretty great. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you. Now what I'm gonna do is this. These things are really great for refining a shape or for shaving the mountains down to the level of the valleys so I'm going to do that all the way around you see that let's see so it's pretty bumpy on the outside and this tool just evens all those bumps right out So now we're going to use what my friend Shelly Boa calls the metal rib of death, mm, right? Um, it's not really the metal rib, rib of death, but <clears throat> you can give yourself a nasty cut with these things. So, you know, you do need to sort of be careful. So, you know, the surf arm blade or the little cheese grater thingy, has left a series of marks on the outside of the pinch pot. And you might like those marks. You might like them. So you would leave them alone. But I'm gonna pretend that I don't like them and show you how to make a really super smooth pinch pot. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can get some water on a sponge and go over the surface, and that will make it super smooth just by scrubbing it back and forth.
So another thing we learned from pinch pots is that clay changes its state as it dries. First it was a moist clay body, then it became leather hard. Now you might not like this mountain and valley rim. I don't mind it because it sort of tells, talks to me about the process that was used to make it. <clears throat> and I don't see anything wrong with that. But if you don't like it and you want a nice even rim, <clears throat> what you need to do is get a banding wheel or <clears throat> a little spinny thing, as my students call it. And if you rest your elbow down, if you can get your pot centered on there, if you rest your elbow down on the, the table, you can take a, a pointed tool, like this excellent Dolan knife, and make a mark all the way around and then cut it. Cut the rim off so that it's reasonably level. So here's a really basic but very important thing to know. See how this rim is really sharp here? If I leave that rim sharp like that and it goes through the process, <clears throat> when that gets glazed it will be super sharp, like razor sharp. So, depending upon how passive-aggressive you are, you might want to take a sponge and go over that rim and get rid of those sharp edges so that you make the rim drinkable <laughs> instead of having it be a death bowl. So, I want to address the inside of this pinch pot and the outside's reasonably smooth. The inside though is pretty rough, right? So I've got this really excellent rib. My pal Leslie Donald uses rounded coconut shells to do this kind of thing. And you can get a pretty smooth in interior on this by using the rounded edge and scraping the mountains down to the level of the valleys. So I'm going to do that all the way around. So that if I'm eating something out of this, my spoon doesn't go clack, 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 clack all over these mountains and valleys. So now you can see that the interior is all scraped down and all I need to do is take some water and smooth it out just like I did on the outside. This of course is putting water back into the clay. The clay is, clay is porous, so it absorbs the water. But it does help to make the interior nice and smooth doing this. Now, of course, at this point, you can decorate it any way you want. If you want to add surface texture to it, you could stamp into it. You could carve into it when it's a little, little harder. You know, you could impress some lines or write some letters on it. Write a letter on it. Send it to somebody. Who knows? Right? Make sure it sits right. It's nice and round. And there you go. So 
there you have it. Back to basics with the mighty pinch pot. Um, I really enjoy making pinch pots. I find it nice and relaxing. And we can all use a little bit more of that. It teaches you a lot. Sensitivity to the material, how to feel thickness, and also that clay changes its state as it dries. So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe, and uh, my next little video will be about coil pots, of course. Take care, bye now.